Hi, my name is Angus Ho with Daddy Dad, a part of the Ash Management Group. I want to show how you can budget as a full-time engineer, make real estate investments, and live an exceptional family life as a dad. So, come along with me in this journey of wealth. A subscribe challenge and giveaway is underway. I'm giving up to $100 plus the monetized amount of this channel. If you want more details about how to participate, I suggest that you check out the subscriber challenge video. I'll leave a link in the description down below. For now though, the monetized amount during the contest period is $33.61. So the maximum prize pot is $133.61. And $33.61. Hurry and share this video to build up that prize money. The contest period ends January 28th. The S&P 500 is a collection of stocks. This index is a method to track the performance of a group of assets in a standardized way. It is like a stock market benchmark, if you will. An index actually doesn't have any money or value in it, and it's really up to the banks to simulate the S&P 500. You must be wondering, what am I saying? You can't really walk into the New York Stock Exchange and ask if you want to buy the S&P 500 index fund. You have to go through a bank like Vanguard where an investor can buy the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, stock ticker symbol BOO. You can also use Robinhood app and purchase the Standards & Poor's Depository Receipts SPDR S&P 500 ETF, stock ticker symbol SPY. The big difference between all these different banks is how well managed these funds are. Also, the better the fund is managed, the more management fee that has to be paid. There are many indexes out there in the world, not just the S&P 500. This includes the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Financial Times Index 100, the Nikkei 225, the Russell 2000, just to name a few. With so many choices, what are the differences, you might be wondering? The biggest differences are the criteria for acceptance into the index. Some index funds are accepted by committee like the S&P 500 is. Some are decided by a computer and as soon as the requirements are met, they will automatically be placed into the index. For the S&P 500 index fund, there are six selection criteria to be included into the S&P 500 index. The first criteria is market capitalization. Market capitalization is the number of shares the company holds multiplied by the cost per share. To be eligible for the S&P 500 index, the company needs at least 9.8 billion USD. If we look at a company like Apple as an example, the market cap for Apple is $2.29 trillion. So Apple definitely meets that criteria. The second criteria is that the annual dollar value traded to float adjusted market is greater than 1.0. There is a fancy formula that is pretty complicated to calculate that. The third criteria is that the minimum monthly trading volume is 250,000 shares in each of the six months leading up to the evaluation date. Once again, using Apple as an example, Apple today has a trading volume of 99 million shares. This number more than qualifies for inclusion. Other criteria include that the stock must be publicly listed in the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. 
the company should be from the United States. These are all qualifications that Apple have met and therefore is included in the index. Now I want to dive a little into the history of Tesla before joining the S&P 500. Tesla was founded on July 1st, 2003 by Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening. In February 2004, Elon Musk contributed US $6.5 million of the Series A seed round of US $7.5 million. At this point, Elon Musk became chairman of the board of directors. Musk took an active role within the company and oversaw roaster product design at a detailed level. But Elon was not deeply involved in day-to-day -day business operations. In February 2006, Musk led Tesla's Series B investment round of US $13 million. In May 2006, Musk co-led the third round of investment of US $40 million. In 2008, Musk led another round, the fourth round, of another $40 million in debt financing. Then, after many CEO changes, Musk in October of 2008 seceded Drury as CEO and fired 25% of Tesla employees. In December of 2008, a fifth round of investment turned into debt financing had added another US $40 million avoiding bankruptcy. On July 29, 2010, Tesla Motors filed Form S1 with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission indicating its intention to file an initial public offering. Then, on June 29, 2010, Tesla launched its initial public offering on NASDAQ. Then, finally, on December 20th, 2020, Tesla officially joined the S&P 500. Now, looking through the criteria for inclusion to see what Tesla's numbers are, the first criteria is market cap. The current market cap for Tesla is $690 billion, which is more than enough to be included. The next thing is volume. And Tesla is trading with a volume of 49 million. So that qualification is also met. As you can probably tell, all the other criteria are also met to be included into the index as well if we further inspect Tesla. So what has happened after the initial join for Tesla? It wasn't met by the most positive response from NBC News says that Tesla joins S&P 500 with shares falling over 4%. CNBC says the Tesla shares fall 6% as it enters the S&P 500. So the biggest question I had for myself was why the disappointment? Right now, I don't think many people can predict the world and how they would react to the news. So, looking at some technical statistics on Tesla are that the P.E. ratio is at 1400 times, which means the company is way overvalued. Tesla also has $27 billion in debt as well, which doesn't look that good on paper as a company. These two things actually scare me quite a bit as the company has so much potential but the books don't reflect the current value of the company. Now I want to look into the S&P 500 funds from banks. By looking into the SPDR S&P 500 ETF stock ticker symbol SPY, you can tell that it has been added to that fund. So if you go to Robinhood or your bank and ask them to invest your money into SPI, you will get a portion of Tesla. 
if you were investing in a portfolio with your bank like Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF stock ticker symbol BOO, you will see that you won't be getting any Tesla in that fund. Or if you look into TD Waterhouse or TD Ameritrade S&P 500 ETF stock ticker symbol TDB661, you won't get any Tesla in that fund either. To understand why that is, is that we need to understand how ETFs really work. ETFs are not actively managed, and depending on the fund, fund managers will review these funds annually to never to quarterly. So these fund managers will rebalance the portfolio by selling some of the current stocks to buy Tesla. With big banks, it will take some time for the inclusion because bank-specific ETFs are designed to mimic the S&P 500 but doesn't necessarily have to mimic the index exactly on time. Nor does the mix have to mimic the fund exactly. So for Tesla to start seeing a huge rise in its share, it will need to take time for all of the funds to start including Tesla. Right now, TD Waterhouse recommends hold on Tesla by 11 analysts, 7 sells, and 7 buys. So their funds to include Tesla would probably not include it for now. However, looking into Zach's analysts, they are recommend number one. They are recommending number one strong buy with Tesla. So the question is, what am I doing with all this information? Well, I did buy into the hype of Tesla being included in the S&P 500. I bought some of it back in November, and now I am currently up 23% to date. It's a small, nice game for one month, and maybe I'll take the recommendations from my bank to hold my position for now. Tesla to me is a risky stock, unpredictable and very overpriced. The potential of the stock seems endless. So I will say that each person should make their own call based on circumstance. I hope this sheds some light into my thoughts on Tesla after the inclusion of the S&P 500. Just right in time, those dislike trolls have finally shown up. Help me smash that like button to get rid of them. Ah, they're coming after me. Smash that like button. Hurry. Thanks for helping me out. By following all those things, you can reach your dream house sooner. Travel the world without having to worry about money and just relax and enjoy. Or be financially independent and retire early. Just remember, anyone can do it. Even me, who is just an everyday dad who budgets and work hard as an engineer to stay out of debt. Then, one day, he discovered the ASH method and strategically invested it in real estate and the stock market. Because of that, he can run a side company and manage over $3 million in properties. Because of that, he can now travel the world with his wife every year and live in the 2,000 square feet house. Until finally, he became a millionaire. Actually, 95% plus of the way there. Make sure you ask any questions in the Daddy Debt Facebook group. Also, comment below any questions you may have about what you have heard in the comment section down below. If you like to hear more budgeting, engineering, or real estate tips, please leave a comment down below on what you want to hear. Smash that like button, subscribe button, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I post new videos every week on Mondays and Thursdays. From the Ash Management Group, this is Daddy Debt, saving you money.